Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 21 of We the Revolution. As we found out in the last episode, our wife and our son have left us, because they hate us. And today we have another normal trial. So let's see why he's here. He's here for neglect of duty. Ah, oh, a lot of people want him dead. During a fight in the suburbs, four lancers from enemy troops were detained by our militia regiment. Our soldiers first shot down their horses, then stormed the inn which the cavalrymen had run to on foot. Restrained and gagged, the enemies were taken to the temporary headquarters located in a small farm in the country. There was no time for interrogation, as the counteroffensive was still underway. Instead, the prisoners were detained in a storage cellar guarded by 17-year-old Private Victor Deval. Following protocol, he was armed with a rifle and pistol. In the evening, one of the officers wanted to move the lancers to the general staff. He found the guard was sleeping near the door and one of the cavalrymen had managed to escape. His companions must have lifted him up and helped him to remove the old rusty bars. The SKP gave way to the location of our field staff and we lost our prisoners. Okay, so he fell asleep on the job. Well, that was kind of crucial there. So sleeping guard is probably the accusation. Farm in the country was probably the crime scene. Yes. Um, storming an inn was probably the course of events. The fight too. I, how is the fight an extenuating circumstance? But okay. Okay, so the rusty bars were the trap. You're 17, it says. Hmm. Well, you had to grow up quick. Are you Private Victor Duval? Yes, Monsieur Le Josh. How old are you? Seventeen, Monsieur Le Josh. In my day, children were more responsible than that fellow. Oh, come on. How long have you been serving in the army? For three weeks, Monsieur Le Josh. And you have already managed to commit a war crime? Do you know the possible consequences that await you? Do you want to say something? Yes, sir. I did not intend to let the prisoners go free. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. I figured as much that he probably didn't fall asleep on purpose. How many soldiers were in the headquarters when the prisoner escaped? About 30, I think, and the officers too, but they were sitting a bit further away. The cellar was near the pigsty under the woodshed. Were there any other guards? Exactly! 30 culprits but only one scapegoat! I think they were patrolling along the fence. And none of them caught the SKP? Apparently not, Monsieur Le Judge. Call in the witness. Please introduce yourself. Captain Berrier. That is all you have to say about yourself? I do not have time for this. The enemy is coming at us while we are wasting our time on traitors. Well, I guess he already called him a traitor, so... I think I'm just gonna ask him why did they leave a 17-year-old in charge of standing guard alone? For 30 people. Why did you leave such an inexperienced soldier on watch? So that he would become more experienced. Do you know of an easier task than sitting on a stool and making sure that four exhausted, injured men don't escape from a locked room? From a locked room? Every soldier must be of some use. Were you aware of the defendant's exhaustion when you gave him the order? Obviously. That is why I told him to guard the prisoners in a safe place. Meanwhile, I and my people were supporting Colonel de Montigny's flank, who was engaged with enemy troops. Well, I don't know. I guess it's just like... You can just call it desperate times. And... I see in the files that the prisoners would not give up without a fight. I heard they hid in a house and fought with bayonets. Yet your command decided to lock them in a cellar and leave a lone child to guard them? What would you have done if they had started running? If you were not asleep at that moment, of course. I would have shot them. Sure, that kid would shoot someone. Kind of doubt it. Have you ever killed a man? Answer the question. Yes, the day before. We were fighting with bayonets and I pierced someone's head right through. Ew. Why were you so tired on the day of the incident? Were you fighting? Only in the morning, Monsieur Le Josh. Why? My column found itself under artillery fire. There was panic and we escaped. 
In the old days we fought like men. What happened to us? Did you run too, soldier? A man standing right next to me was torn in half by round shot. I... You escaped because you were scared? Yes, I was scared. Let me guess, you were also too scared to shoot the prisoners. If I hadn't been sleeping... You'd better stop talking, boy. Was it maybe that he wasn't sleeping and he would that he would just that he would just say that he was sleeping so that he wouldn't that he have to admit that he wouldn't have been able to shoot these guys anyway? The headquarters were located at a farm. It was an old house, more like a shack, surrounded by a few small buildings, a pixie, a hen house, a woodshed. How did the prisoner escape? They must have pulled the bars out. The building was barely holding itself together, Monsieur Le Judge. Just a slight push was enough. In houses like that, even a door was likely to fall off. You did not hear anything? No, Monsieur Le Judge. I only wanted to close my eyes for a few minutes. I hadn't had much sleep at the time. A few weeks in the army and you were already exhausted? Waltonville, are you in the war right now? He's young. If he didn't want to sleep, he wouldn't. An officer woke you up? Captain Berrier, he was so angry that he almost shot me on the spot, Monsieur Le Josh. They could have taken your weapon and killed someone. I know that, sir. I don't know. Well, I guess the jury says that he's going free, and I think I would have felt bad if I really had to sentence him to death now. So, we ask everything there was. He's innocent. I gotta do something for the revolutionary soon or I'll die. But hey, I have a feeling that I will die soon anyway. I don't know by whom, but... Ludie Guide and Marie-Laure Bouillet are reported to have robbed a drunk Thadé at Ney. When they threatened to stab him with a knife, he quickly gave them his wallet. The victim was not injured. No. Okay, that gave me something for the revolutionaries, that's good. Eugene Dumont invited Lambert Maître to supper at his house to discuss business. Once the conversation started going awry, Dumont told his butler, Hector Bazalguet, to serve the guest a poisoned meal. Maître survived the supper, but he's still suffering as a result of the incidents. Um, yeah, no. Marthe Betancourt, a widow running a funeral home, has been caught removing gold dentures from the jaws of the deceased. The truth was revealed when Etienne Corriveau came to bid farewell to his uncle. The young man was intending to rob the deceased himself. He was so disappointed that we reported Betancourt's crime. <laughs> okay. Well, that sucks for him. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not gonna kill her for that. <laughs> So, did the defendant confess to the crime? Yeah, was this a counter-revolutionary? I guess not. Was the defendant fighting on the day of the incident? Yes, in the morning. He was, but it, his unit deserted the battlefield. How did the Lancers manage to escape? They pulled the bars from the window. By falling asleep, you put many lives in danger, but we still need you in our ranks. You are free to go, Private. We should not be so lenient. We are at war. Yes, soldiers should fight, not rot in a cell. What? The whole unit could have been killed because of him. Oh, it's kind of... Yeah, I see. Oh, I didn't take a look at this... At our statue picture. It looks scary. So, have a nice life. Bye. So, off to fight, I guess. Where are they? Where is my son? I don't know. Mathilde did not say anything. There were a few tears, but mostly silence. I saw no need to ask for any details when I knew she would not tell me anyway. You let them leave the house? Why should I try to stop them? Did they leave because of me? Everyone left. I am still here. You are still my son. I am not who you wanted me to become. No, but I believe in you. And I will believe in you until the end. Aww. It is the end. At least for me. Yep. Pretty sure. Your reputation is so low that nobody wants to spend time with you. Only your father is by your side, as always. <sighs> 
I have a feeling that we're nearing towards the end. And I also have a feeling that in the end, Alexis Fidel will be sentenced to death as well. Or he will be murdered. Who knows? Oh wow, I forgot how dire our situation was. Hmm, okay. Oh wait, they're only attacking this district. How nice. So I can stock up here. So this one is full already. Okay, then I will just put one here and how many of these? There's one that I can place. Yeah, one more of him. Okay. Well then let's fight. Both equally equipped, so let's see. Oh no, they have a lot of cannons, but hey, we should be good. Okay, did it. Oh, that was good. That was good. So we... We kept this district safe once more at least. So I mean, I should restock on these guys too, right? So I can put another one here. Wait, he is, he is first row, so maybe I should... Because I think I now have two second rows here. Oh wait, we have enough spots here and these are full anyway, so let's just place everyone here. Okay. Oh, holy hell. Reputation minus 16, yeah, that sucks. We still have a long way to go to be rescued, right? But hey, we didn't lose the district now. It's something. I suppose it's supposed to go that way. Okay, several minor cases, let's go. Gaetan de Villiers has bragged on numerous occasions about sleeping with the wife of a well-known butcher, Hugo Vallée, always describing the act in great detail. The woman denied, both publicly and during a private hearing, having any intimate relations with him. Okay, so he just claims that he has an affair? I mean, this is a scumbag move, but I don't want to behead anyone for this. Rémi Chapuis, known as a freak amongst the locals, tried to secretly cut a lock of hair from a young girl at a street market. After searching his house, we found more such trophies. The victim and her family are convinced that Chapuis wanted to curse her. Is that something to die for? I mean, this is... it's creepy. I give him that, but... Does creepy behavior always end in death? Also, I mean cursing. They're, they're afraid that their daughter will be cursed. Is that the reason to behead someone? No. Late in the evening, Jean-Luc Marie assaulted two cooks by the Seine. At first, he picked on them verbally and whistled at them, and then he tried to grope them. The women escaped. After a short time, Marie was detained in a winery nearby. Okay, no. Damn it, I need to be better for the revolutionaries. Jules Villemar and Vincent Varlet were hired by one of the Parisian mobs to collect debts from a number of young thieves from Rue de Lombard. They took the money and shot the debtors. The bandits were detained when they tried to run away with the money. If I remember this correctly, this is something that they belong to the revolutionaries. So if I kill them, the revolutionaries will dislike me. But on the other hand, no. No, 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 no. Whoa! Okay, oops. I think we're gonna lose our job. Although, seriously, who would want to take our job in this moment? Right now. Alphonse Bouhier murdered his business partner and tried to secretly move his body out of Paris. When the guard asked to search his vehicle, he offered them a very generous bribe. The intrigued soldiers found the body and arrested the murderer. 
Yeah, we already lost with the revolutionaries, so hey. Clément Abadi robbed his neighbor's cellar. He stole 16 large jars of jam and many other preserves. When the guard knocked at his door, most of the food had already been consumed. Oh no. So I'm really interested in what will happen now. Will I really be immediately removed of, from the office? Thank you. Okay. I'd love to see that. Because seriously, I don't want to do this job anyway. Okay, so that really is it. Yeah, okay. Wow, really? Well, that's how fast it can go. Okay, so I'm going to let these guys go free. These two. This one too. Oh wow, okay, so now I'm going to die. Right? Or will I survive? Because it's not... the whole. Because the whole thing is not entirely down. So the bar is not entirely on the bottom. Let's see. Let's see if we're going to get killed now. Yeah, I think so. Matilde. Oh no. She has a knife in her hands. Seriously, don't go to her now. Ah! Okay, ha. Oh, that smile on her face. I do not understand. <laughs> Father. Do you hear me? Always. I fixed you. You will live, at least for now. Where am I? Uh, who are you? I am the truth about your unhappiness and the lie about your greatness. They are both the reasons for your presence in this place. Where everything started. I don't understand. I repaired all the damage, as I always do. You will live, but do you want to? Are you ready to admit that it is my performance, my show? Mathilde, I love her so. I know, but she no longer returns that love, not for a long time. I made sure of that. Who the hell are you? I am the truth overcoming the lies that you keep telling yourself. The lies that you are here for power. For the numerous choices and endings. I have not designed you for that. Designed? You are supposed to suffer, to make others laugh or grieve. To feel. Now is the only real choice you will ever make. To die and never feel anything again. Or to really feel what being a true hero is like. I am a judge, not a... Tell me, when was the last time you read all the files connected to a single case? The last time you really heard everything the accused had to say? Last case. I asked him all the questions. I need a hero, not a judge. People want to be heroes. How could I? My wife wanted to kill me. My family hates me. Fight for their lives. Half the city wants me dead. Fight for Paris. My brother comes with an unconquerable army. Then be a shield for the poor and terrified souls who, who do not have anyone else to defend them. A shield. I could open your wounds instead, and you will never suffer again. Perry would fall. But uh, since you are not interested, I would find someone in your place. Here is the choice you craved so dearly for. 
Well, I guess we're obviously going to choose life, right? I mean, what's the point in this? We would just give our brother what he wants by dying now, because then we would really break our father. And that's what he wants, so... I guess we're going to choose life. Will they accept me? They do not have to, but you will defend them anyway. You will become a legend for it, and one day they will appreciate you. Now rise up. You have to defeat him. Oh no. So I wasn't quite sure if the scene would be like our death because we made the the um, common folk angry, but it was yeah, our wife betrayed us once more. I mean, why? She could have just left and left us alone, but no, she she had to say that she left, that she's leaving, and then come back to stab us once more. I mean, what the hell? Make up your mind. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. But I guess all our troops are full, so let's go. Let's have a fight. I mean, hey, we have 1% more effectiveness. So maybe we manage to protect our citizens once more. Yay! I saved my island for another time. But I lost my cannons, that's too bad. And I lost a lot of troops. <sighs> I need to restock those soon, but first I need to fight this battle. Uh, I guess we're going to lose this, and then we're going to have a problem, because we have, we'll have two districts with no defense. Yes! Oh, thank god. I was so scared that I would lose this anyway. Oh, because w although it was starting to look better for us. Nice! Nice. Okay. Hey, another round where we didn't lose a district. How about that? So what am I going to do? I think I'm going to put this musketeer on the island again. Guess this city guard goes. Oh wait, do we have we have eight city guards there, so maybe some. Wait. So these are second row. These are first row. Let's put them here. And those here. Yes, maybe another city guard here. Why not? Okay. I mean, hey, now with those three districts, we're not holding up that bad. I mean, everyone else is dying, but... But in all those districts that, that the other guys have, everyone's dead already, so if we keep protecting our districts now, it should be better, right? Oh, well. Day 9 it is! I forgot to take a look 
when our reinforcements will come. It should be here in a few days, right? Aha! Uh -huh. Hello, wife. So we see each other again. Well, guess what I'm going to do to you? I don't know. Attempted murder. I wonder who you tried to murder. I think it was me. The defendant is... Well, you know her very well, Monsieur Le Judge, and you know best what she has been accused of. But as a diligent clerk, I shall continue for the sake of thoroughness. She has been accused of attempted murder. Yesterday, Mathilde Fidel used a kitchen knife to stab her husband, Judge Alexis Fidel, at the entrance to the Revolutionary Tribunal. According to witnesses, she was overpowered immediately and without trouble, as the defendant quickly threw her weapon to the ground and offered no resistance. Unfortunately, I have to record an additional piece of information. It seems that the defendant had an affair with the former commander-in-chief of the National Guard, François Henriot. Oh, you! Henriot, huh? I was able to determine that they were seen together several times after he applied for the position as commander-in-chief. Oh, after that, so he wrapped you around his little finger. When we searched for Henriot's apartment after his death, we found letters suggesting a relationship with a married woman. They contained no names, so it was not easy to ascertain who the commander's lover was, but now we have no doubt. At the same time, a potential motive for the murder has been revealed, as we know Henriot was killed after a skirmish defending Robespierre from our troops. As for other gossip concerning your family relationships, I will remain silent, as you know more than I do about what is true. Oh, wife. I mean, seriously, once again, why and how am I, her husband, the judge, and not only am I her husband, but I am her victim, how am I again the judge of this case? How is this possible? Oh well. So her lover's death was probably a motive. No resistance during the arrest is probably her personality. The weapon is maybe a method. So, the family relations. Maybe it belongs to her personality. Maybe it's the motive. Maybe it's her motive. And the defendant's affair probably was a motive. Or the course of events. That's... Yes, okay. Ah, and it was a course of events. Well, see, wife, I know you so well. Oh, oops, wrong. The defendant may introduce herself. Don't make jokes. You know who I am. I am not in the mood for humor. Speak loudly. Mathilde Fidel, the wife of the judge presiding here today. Are you happy now? I'm not happy. You just stabbed me. I think it is kind of obvious that I'm going to kill her, right? So, just to say it in advance. How did you react to the death of the traitor, Henriot? Do you understand the question? I took it badly, but it was far worse to sleep in the same bed as the man responsible for his death, my husband. Henriot betrayed France. No more than the judge of this tribunal has betrayed his family, which he has done repeatedly. How? You betrayed our family. You betrayed me. You have always been the most important person to me. And now you also betray yourself. You know all too well that power is on a pedestal. Is that how they bought you? Build power in Paris? Pass sentences? Did they forget to mention your family? I don't know if I remember this correctly, but didn't she seem in the beginning also not that opposed to me gaining power? They did. I guess you didn't hear properly then, because your family has just fallen apart. Was your affair the reason for the attack? You really know nothing about your own family. Answer! Restrain yourself, Antoine. My affair was not the reason, but yours were. Your affairs with women, power, money and alcohol. You weren't able to hide them, and you didn't want to give them up. Did this happen off screen? Did I, did, did I have an affair with another woman? And how much did I drink? I never went to the gambling den except one. I, once. I always went home straight afterwards. This whole spending time with you was for nothing. There were no affairs. No? And your lust for power? You crave it. How many people have you killed to get it? I just don't get her. <laughs> I really don't. You are insinuating 
I'm insinuating nothing. I'm stating a fact. Your lust for power has led our family to the brink of disaster. And you ask me about my affair? Yeah, I do. Because... You had an affair and you tried to murder me, so hey, stop the whataboutism. You're going down anyway, so let's just... How did you choose your weapon? I didn't think long. It was supposed to be something sharp and effective and easy to have at hand when I needed it. You speak of the matter without any emotion. What did you expect? You wanted to make the choices, but which ones? You've become someone above everyone else and been given the possibility to choose who will live and who will not. But unlike us, you don't want to suffer the consequences. It's almost made you like God, as he is the only one free from the burden of his choices, but you are still human. You want special treatment and yet you are only one of millions. What makes you feel more important than those who have helped to elevate us? Who are you talking about? Your blind desire to decide has made you a fly in their ointment, but necessary to achieve their work's perfection. You want power, you want to be the first, and yet you will only get what you give. This hatred cannot be stopped. Her prattling ravings show the woman has gone insane. Yeah, also, I mean, I know that the game has made us do questionable things in terms of being just and all that, but I don't know why she should be the one who... Um, should make the player feel remorse about that because seriously i don't understand what i did wrong in in terms of spending time with my family i always spend time with my family before this whole incident of um our crazy brother who again how is that my fault my wife loved me to the fullest like in our interaction relationship thing i wasn't that bad i always spend time with them i always try to keep everyone happy and now this is like as if i didn't even care at all so it's kind of strange and also i i don't know everything ah. really they want no uh, no no you are not going to think that she has to go three why were you so calm during the arrest i stopped you in public how could i escape that is true you stabbed your own husband. Did you even feel anything? I only feel sick when I see my husband. It has been like that for a long time now. So you feel no remorse or crisis of conscience? My only regret is that I stabbed him too lightly. A real beast. And you're telling me this to my face. You deserve to die. Who else could say that to you? How long did your affair last? Since Henriot came asking for you to support his application for the post of Commander-in-Chief. So, quite a long time. How were you able to keep it secret all this time? My husband was blinded by the splendor that surrounded him by the fighting and bloodshed. He no longer cared about the details. I did not think that I needed to watch over my own wife. And I didn't think I'd have to kill my husband to get rid of him. Giving myself to another was certainly of no help, as you didn't even notice. At least you finally noticed something when I pushed the knife between your ribs. Having an affair was a cry for attention? Really, Mathilde? When you had your affair, did you consider the impact it would have on your family? I certainly hoped it would make an impact. I hoped for my husband to disappear, to leave, and for my family to survive. At least some part of it. As far as I know, you still hold this hope. As far as you know, I'm no longer fooling myself. I will soon be dead, and the fact that my family is falling apart will no longer be my problem. <laughs> what the hell? You still have one son! Come on! What a crazy woman are you? Not your problem. How can you say that? You are a mother! Don't you dare! Don't! A mother? One of my sons was hanged and the other is traumatized after getting strapped to a torture chair. And why? Because of your hunger for power. Yours. You sitting there are to blame. Again, my brother is to blame, not me. I didn't ask to dice for my son's hands with him. Hold your tongue. I had to watch it happening, accept everything and I couldn't stop it. You played with our lives. That knife between your ribs is the first time I've ever had the chance to change anything. So I don't know if the game is supposed to make you feel compassionate for your wife now, that she suffers a lot too and everything, but 
I don't. I just think that... Oh, the jury's opinion is not available in this case. Well, then... So I could also let her free? So, the problem is, I mean, if I let her go now... Although, I don't know, when... It just doesn't even matter right now. Why is it displayed here? And second of all, if even if I let her free in, like, a tremendous act of kindness, I would just think that she would go stab me again does pain me to make this sentence that I really have to behead her once again because she's making it look again like something that we drove her into. We drove her into attempting to murder us, although that doesn't really make any sense to me. I don't know, for everything she just threw at us, it just... I only feel responsible for like half of that because, like I said, I, I did spend every evening if it wasn't like necessary for the for the plot or something like that. I spent every evening at home spending time with my family. Except for when I sent them to build the statue. But still, she's here for attempted murder and that she did, so... Yes, she did. Was her act counter-revolutionary? <sighs> Isn't everything counter-revolutionary? No, it wasn't, because her motive wasn't anything political. She just hates her husband. There can be no other sentence. She is guilty. I'm sorry, Mathilde. Quick to the guillotine, then. What a drama. He's willing to behead his own wife. Well, my wife was also willing to stab me in the ribs, so... Oh, okay, so it wasn't counter... Okay, so now... Ew. Still pretty bad. I am definitely not going to give a speech for this. Other people are ir irritated. I will join my son in heaven. At least I know you will not find us there. What about our still living son, huh? You're just leaving him alone. I'm sorry, Mathilde. Yep. Let's build some barricades. Sorry, father. I hope our son is safe, at least. Wait, no one is fighting for us? Fighting us today? Immortal. Two assassination attempts and yet you still live. The new enlightened society claims it does not believe in superstition, but the streets whisper that you cannot be killed. <laughs> Maybe that's true. I don't know. This is full. I have so many full garrisons now, so there can be play two can be here, and oh wait, you have to fight. Um. Okay. Well, I'm gonna put the infantry here just to prepare, and now we have to defend this district again. We are one percent more effective although our troops are smaller so let's see if we lose this as well oh no they have three cannons how are we supposed to do that okay i think we're going to lose this Well, I protected some. I don't understand how my troops should have been 1% more effective. They had three cannons, but okay. So I already lost this island again, too. Two days before the relief comes. Yes. Okay, so I'm just gonna stock up this one. 
Oh, they're all full. Well then, I'm gonna keep you. I think we should survive for two more days, right? Okay, so some only minor cases today. We are going to handle those in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.